Hello friends! Happy Friday and happy Christmas Eve! If you celebrate, of course, and if not, just like happy Friday. Um, welcome to another reading vlog. I thought I would do like a holiday reading vlog because I do have next week off of work. I am technically working today, but I am like the only person working and no one's working. Um, so it's gonna be a quiet day, but I thought I would kick off the vlog here because, because it is quiet, I might be listening to um, audiobooks uh, while I work. So I just thought I would like run you through what I'm reading at the moment. Um, basically for the holiday week, I have a current mood and I know I have like a multiple currently readings on my currently reading. And I know like a lot of people like to go into the new year with like a clear, a clear conscience, if you will. I'm not one of those people. I don't really give a shit. Um, so I, a couple of days ago, randomly uncharacteristically got into the mood to just read a bunch of like holiday romances and holiday like I don't know what they're called are they like like holiday women's fiction basically I hate that term but you know what I mean like a Hallmark movie but in book form you know what I'm saying so I got a whole bunch some of them I have on audio some of them I have on like e-reader some of them I'm doing both um but basically long story short on Thursday night I started with window shopping by Tessa Bailey which is the one that's all over my feet everyone's giving it five stars four stars I DNF'd it at 50% and I ranted about it a little bit in my Goodreads review, but like you can look forward to a good bit of ranting on my worst books of 2021 list because that was fucking terrible. Is this the pinnacle of holiday rom-coms? Is this it? Like everyone's giving this one five stars. Is this it? Um, but then of course, Katie came through um, <laughs> and let me know that written in the stars, um, I can't remember the author's name now, but Written in the Stars is a sapphic Pride and Prejudice retelling. It's been on my radar for an, a while now. I've known for a while that it was a Pride and Prejudice retelling and it's been on my radar because of that, but I didn't know that it was a holiday rom-com. And so Katie let me know that it is a holiday book. So I started that last night. I'm now 70, like 5% of the way through it. Um, and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. There is like an excessive amount, in my opinion, of pop culture references in this book though. A lot of which are Harry Potter references in general. I just think pop culture references are cringy. Um, I don't like them. They always take me out of the story. Other than that though, I am enjoying the book. Uh, I really like Darcy as a character. She is just Chef's Kiss Amazing. Like I really like her. I have been reading that one on ebook, but I do actually have the audiobook for that. So I might put on the audiobook for that this morning and finish it off. But the other thing I am working on this week is of course, you can't even see it because it's so shiny. The Veiled Throne by Ken Liu. <laughs> I'm so excited to read this. I literally have been waiting for this book all fucking year. And then it got pushed back um, from November till now. And it's perfect because now I can read it while I'm on vacation. I'm probably going to start this tonight, I think. Um, I do. Oh, look at the map on the inside. I've never seen it like this because in the paperback, it's obviously not in color. I'm actually so excited for this because I actually last year during my Christmas break was when I read Grace of Kings. So I just feel like I'm just like reliving that lifestyle, you know? But anyway, this week is going to be this massive tome um interspersed with like holiday roms anyway um that is it for this check-in just wanted to check in and let you know what i'm up to this week and what i'm getting up to but yeah happy christmas eve and i will check in with you guys later hello friends just a quick check-in to let you know that i have finished written in the stars uh, I finished on audio this morning. I would not recommend the audiobook personally. I don't think it's that good. However, I did think the story was like pretty cute. I gave it three stars in the end. Uh, I just think honestly, third act breakups and like third act conflicts in romance are just so not my thing. They're always just so unbelievable to me. I don't know, like in my head, no reasonable adult that is like 30 years old would behave in this way. And anyway, so like, the third act breakup was not for me. But other than that, I thought it was like a cute romance. Not really like a holiday romance per se, but more so like a rom-com that takes place around the holidays. I know, I know it sounds like they're the same thing, but in my head, they're not the same thing. Does anyone else know what I mean? Or am I just crazy? I don't know. Um, I also did want to let you know that I am officially one chapter <laughs> into the Veiled Throne and already shit has hit the fan. Shit has hit the fan. And I'm, I'm like, you know what? Why would I expect 
any less from Ken Liu. Like, I don't know why I thought it would take a while for this book to get going. But you know, by the end of chapter one, like, we're already clubbing people over the head. Like, it's, it's a good time. It's a good time here. I'm very excited to read the rest of this. Um, it is so chunky, though. Like, I feel like reading a book this big is always so daunting, like, even though I love this series so much. But anyway, um, that was just a quick little check in just to let you know my final thoughts and my final rating for written in the stars. Um, and yeah, I've been doing laundry all day today, like in between work and stuff. I've, I'm on my second load of laundry. I really need to do the dishes tonight so that I can cook, but I'm also kind of like super lazy. So we shall see what I end up doing for dinner. I might order takeout again. We'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, for, that's it for now. And I will check in with you guys later. morning friends happy sunday happy boxing day i want to see if there were any good ebook deals and i think there was only like one that i bought so boo anyway i just thought i would check in because obviously i didn't really check in at all yesterday um but i did end up getting some reading done despite um being pretty busy yesterday well i wasn't that busy i just had to go to my sister's house for um her christmas dinner but I have officially finished part two of The Veiled Throne. Granted, <laughs> part two takes you to 25% of the book. So I'm not actually even that far into the book. <laughs> I've barely made a dent, um, but so far I am loving this. Like so far I would say, it's so hard to say, is this my favorite book so far? Like, I don't know. How do I talk about this book without giving any spoilers? It's so hard. Um, but I will say what I love most about this series, and I think why this series is so good to me, is just how like Ken Liu always explores the same event, the same time period, multiple times with different perspectives. We're revisiting in, in part one of this book, a time period that first came up in book one, but we're seeing it from a completely different lens, a completely different perspective. Um, we also revisited this already back in book two, and I already thought it was like a brand new perspective, but now we're getting a third perspective and it's just so well done. And then like certain character ties um, or like little tidbits of information that you really thought were like closed threads or just like small tidbits of information that were just like world building details, they come back into play. They come back into play and you're like, what the fuck? Like this man's brain is actually like on another level. It's actually so mind blowing to me that this book, this world exists. Like it genuinely is so like, rich and lush because of all this nuance and these different perspectives that you're getting and it's just so fucking good and I can't like I can't express enough how good this is and I know when I read Grace of Kings that I was like very hesitant to recommend it because I think it's not a book for everyone I think the writing style um and the way the story is told is not going to be for everyone however I feel like this year more people have read it um obviously Lena and I are hosting our read-along as well and like people have been really enjoying it um in the live chat discussions so like I feel a little bit more comfortable recommending it now whereas like when I first read this last year all the reviews that I'd seen of it online were largely negative except for Lena's I was personally hesitant to pick it up even though I knew I wanted to pick it up because it was it's really one of the first kind of epic Asian fantasies written by an actual Asian person. There have been other epic fantasies that were like kind of inspired by uh, Chinese history and, and whatnot but a lot of them were written by white men and I didn't I don't I don't want to read those like to be quite honest with you I think a lot of Chinese history in like specifically I can't speak to other cultures but like a lot of Chinese history in the west has been very like orientalized and fetishized and I don't I don't 
like it's very uncomfortable to me and it's so hard for me to like describe how much I love this series and this book because this book is just so this world is so different from any of it I've ever read. It's equal parts like similar and also different to our world, but it's just so incredibly well built. Like I don't know how to explain to you, <laughs> but but like we also just have like a cast of characters, first of all, that are massive, but also within this cast of characters, all the characters are just so truly like actually diverse. And I don't just mean in the way they look, I mean like truly like diverse in thought. Every single character, is different, has come from different backgrounds, have different ideologies and philosophies. And like all of these are explored in this book and it, in a way that doesn't make you feel overwhelmed. And I think that is so incredible. I think by comparison, for example, um, a series like the Stormlight Archive of which I really loved the first two books, but I think by the third and fourth book, I realized that I, I started to find it a little bit boring at times because I think all the characters that we follow, despite having different backgrounds, seem to follow like similar ideologies and philosophies and and there are slight differences in thought but it, it it's just not there's not this like broad range of like different types of people and and different ways that people think whereas in this world in the dandelion dynasty everyone is their unique person every single person is different and there are good people there are bad people there are people that are annoying as fuck but they are so well written and they all kind of come together to like piece together this world that is very much like our own in a lot of ways where everyone is so fucking different and there are so many different like pieces and i feel like a lot of times when you read fantasies especially modern fantasies we really hone in on like one perspective or like two perspectives or you know if i'm being generous like let's say three perspectives but this book really gives you everything i can see it not being for everyone i can see it being like very overwhelming or like just like all over the place for some people but i feel like this world is unlike any i've ever read and i really think this series is so fucking special in that way I, i'm not gonna go on too too much because like i said i've only like barely made a dent in this book but like i just want to talk about like this series as a whole and like why it is that i feel like this is one of the grandest most epic fantasy series that i have ever read anyway moving on though um specifically about this book what i'm loving is that um, Thera continues to be my favorite character. She is, I know obviously going into this book, she was probably going to be a, a huge focus. Um, I love her. She's my favorite character. She gets introduced. I mean, technically she gets introduced in book one, but she's like a baby, um, in book one. And I just loved in, in Wall of Storms, we got to see her grow up and like grow into her own and start like, this is the thing. Like you see these characters over time and you see them like develop thought processes, like like, I don't know how else to explain it, but you see them develop into their own people and you see how they have adopted certain ideologies and other ones as well. And it's just so well crafted. Like the character is so well crafted that by this book, she's now an adult and the things she does continue to surprise me in that like, I'm just like, yes, I fucking love this. But like, they don't surprise me in that I'm like, oh, that's out of character. Like her character is so, is fully established. I also love Tuckball. He is like a newer character. He got introduced at the very, very end of book two. Um, but I really like him. He's kind of grown on me at first. I was kind of like, I don't know if I trust you, sir. But now I'm kind of like, what a precious bead. I love him. <laughs> But watch me eat my words. Watch him be like terrible. This is what Ken Liu does. Um, he makes you trust a character and then he's like, nope, sorry. <laughs> Everyone's shit. I'm hoping that Gia comes back soon though, because she is probably like even though Thera is my favorite character Gia is my favorite character to read about because she's just so fucking unhinged and terrible as a human being that I just love her like she is like truly if you like unhinged milfs you you can't not read this series like Gia is the most the most unhinged milf like truly I don't want to like jinx it but like I'm slightly getting like potential future polyamory vibes from this book I'm probably just like you know reading way too much into it because like I, it's just what I personally want to happen but then again last book I thought I was queer baiting myself by thinking these two characters were probably sapphic and then they actually turned out to be sapphic so like never say never I guess but anyway I will be reading for most of today and um I guess I will check in with you guys a little bit later hi friends good morning hello uh, happy Monday 
I don't even know what day of the week it is anymore. This is what happens when I have time off work. I don't know what day of the week it is. Basically, I just wanted to quickly update you on what I'm reading right now because I'm just about to head out to get my booster shot. Um, so I don't know how much I'll be able to check in over the next couple of days. Like, depends how dead I am, I guess. I actually didn't end up reading any of The Veiled Throne yesterday. I ended up reading Trader Baru, and I only have about 50 pages left of it. Um, but I do have the audiobook out from Hoopla, so I'm going to be listening to that in the car and hopefully finishing it um, in the car. Part three is definitely my least favorite part in this entire book though, I will say. Um, but I will give you my final thoughts when I actually finish it and kind of how I feel about it versus when I first read it. But yeah, that's what I'm going to be listening to on audio on the way there and back. Ugh, it's snowing and I don't like driving in the snow. A disaster. Anyway, whatever. But yeah, and then when I get back today, uh, I hope to continue on in the Veiled Throne. But yeah, that's it for this check-in. Just a really quick one just to let you know what I've been up to. Um, and I will see you guys at the next one. Hello friends! It is currently, I don't even know what time it is. I think it's like 8-ish, maybe 9-ish. Um, I got my booster shot. I feel actually pretty okay. Like I feel, I mean touch wood, I feel better than my second shot. I don't know. My arm's a little sore but that's about it. Um, but I did finish Trader Brew Cormorant while I was in the car, which was possibly a bad idea because I got a little emotional and I was like, keep it together. Keep it. What to say about this book that I haven't already in like the many videos where I've talked about this. Um, I still feel the same kind of like I still have very mixed opinions about this book. Um, I kept my rating at a 3.5. I definitely enjoyed it more on the second time around. I feel like everything I felt the first time around it was just everything was just heightened. All the parts that I loved I loved more but all the parts that I hated I hated more. So like it's all kind of balanced. It's still a 3.5 stars for me. Um, it was a lot more emotional this time around I feel because even though like if you are paying close attention to the book, you will know what happens at the end. That's all I'll say about it is that like, Seth Dickinson does lay it out quite well in a way that like, if you are paying attention, you will know what happens. The like plot twist, people call it at the end, I would argue is not really a plot twist. I just feel like it's such a gut-wrenching read. It is, if you are a fan of Grimdark, I actually do really recommend the series. This is, in my opinion, for me personally, the most grim dark book I have ever read. Like it is just truly there is no, nothing good happens in this book. There are no good feelings. Everything is depressing as shit. It's a lot. It's a lot to read. You have to be in the right headspace for it. And I absolutely was in the right headspace for it today and yesterday. Um, I basically read half the book yesterday because I was at the halfway point when I started yesterday. And I only had like 50 pages left today to read. But yeah, um, what I really hate about this book, I will I will say it right now. Part three of this book is an absolute fucking slog, okay? From page like 260 until the last 50 pages, so like a solid like almost 100 pages of this book is like an absolute slog. And for a 400 page book, that's a quarter of the book. Like it's, it's, it's very difficult to get through, I will say that. I don't even think it's poorly written because I think there are a lot of like really well executed like sentences and themes and like certain scenes are really well executed. But I think my biggest problem with Seth Dickinson's writing for me personally, and I don't think this will bother everyone, but for me personally, there is absolutely no transition in between one moment to the next. And so for me, it becomes quite difficult to follow sometimes in the first two thirds of this book, which I argue most people would actually find boring. <laughs> but the first like two thirds of this book, so parts one and part two, are very, very like political heavy or like very um, not action heavy, basically. And I think it's not as clear what the issue I have with his writing is until part three where we start to get battle scenes and we start to get like more action scenes and at that point it is very clear to me that that this specific thing where I feel like he doesn't connect the dots for you at all in his writing is such a problem for me because I find them so difficult to follow like I find these battle scenes incredibly difficult to follow I think the other thing is I think this in general like going on like a war campaign trail kind of thing is not my favorite thing in fantasy like I can think about like in like the first law they do they have a little, little bit as well where they're kind of like in a war camp kind of situation I hate that part of the book it's so boring to me like I don't I don't enjoy it the only book that I can think about that I actually like actively enjoy the war camp elements are is like the poppy war series um 
and that's just because I feel like there's so many shenanigans that go on there. But like in general, the whole like war camp, war campaign trail thing is just not my cup of tea. And so part three of this book was just so difficult to get through to be quite honest. But again, I did enjoy it more the second time around. I think emotionally it had more of an impact on me. I think because I'm a lot more like attached to Baru now as a character. I'm glad I reread it though, because I really feel like I missed a lot the first time around. But what to read for the rest of the night? What I really should read is The Veiled Throne, because that was my goal for the week to finish The Veiled Throne. And I'm only 250 pages into it. I don't know if I'm in the mood for it tonight though, because I don't know, I just, I'm not, I'm not. So I kind of have two options. One option is just to kind of like finish things off my currently reading. I have about a third left of my reread of Iron Widow. So maybe I will just continue on with that and just finish it tonight because this is a pretty fast read. But the other thing I kind of want to do is I kind of want to start book two <laughs> in the Masquerade series um, and read the Monster Brewer Corrin. I don't really know what to expect from book two. Um, I did read a couple of reviews. Oh, actually, a lot of reviews don't like book two. Um, and I think part of the problem is because um, books two and three in this series were actually originally written as one book and then they had to be published separately. And I think they were published at least a year apart. And so I feel like a lot of people's criticisms of book two specifically is that there's no payoff like whatsoever. Um, and it just feels like really unsatisfying to read because of that. But there are more recent reviews where people have read books two and three like back to back and they enjoy it more. Um, but they do say that reading book two on its own is a little meh. But I've also heard that we follow more perspectives in book two, which is kind of interesting because Trader Brew Cormorant, like the first book, is very much just Baru. Like you are really only following her POV. You barely even get to know the other characters because Baru treats everyone in her life as if they are all expendable. Like it doesn't matter, you know, how much she likes them maybe, or like has feelings for them or whatever. She doesn't care. As long as they can be sacrificed for her goal, she will do it. Like she doesn't give a shit. Um, and so it's very interesting to read a book from that perspective. It's part of what makes the first book so difficult to read though, because if you don't like Baru as a character, you're not gonna like the book because you are only in her head. So I'm actually really interested in continuing on because yeah, apparently we get different perspectives moving on and I'm excited for the slower pacedness of this. Um, and I am actually really excited to um, hopefully delve into like the aftermath of what happens at the end of the first book because the end of the first book is so traumatic, like so traumatic for me. So like, <laughs> I can't even imagine how traumatic it must be for her. Um, so I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Am I gonna read this and start another book? Or am I going to finish Iron Widow? Or maybe I do both. What I really should read is Veiled Throne, but that's tomorrow's problem, you know? But I will check in with you guys tomorrow, hopefully if I'm not dead, but if not, I will see you at the next check-in. Hello friends! It is already 3 p.m. on Tuesday, um, December 28th. Reading plans have not gone as I have planned at all. I have not made any progress on The Veiled Throne in a couple of days. Uh, last night I did host some sprints and I did actually finish uh, my reread of Iron Widow. Uh, I gave it four stars in the end. I did bump it down from the original 4.5 that I gave it. I think um, even though I love the characters, I love the kind of themes and the messaging, I do feel like the writing is more apparently an issue. Like I definitely had issues with it the first time around, but I think I gave it more of a pass. Whereas like on reread, it's a lot more apparent that there are issues with the writing. And I think the theming is a little too on the nose, but I do still love the characters. Oh, the characters. Oh. I love them. I love them. I do still really recommend the book. I just had to bump it down like a little bit because I do think um, it could be better. Um, but I'm so excited for the second book. I really hope it comes out in the next year. But anyways, after I finished Iron Widow, I was gonna go back to the Veiled Throne, but like, I just was in such a mood to start Monster Baru. Um, and so I did. And I only was planning on reading like one chapter. And I was like, I just want to get a feel for, you know, where this book is picking up, like what's going to happen. And I kind of got hooked after one chapter. I was like, I got to keep reading. And now I'm on chapter three. So I'm not that far in. I'm only like 
you know, 50 pages into it or whatever. Uh, but so far, I'm really liking this. I won't lie. Like, if you told me someone else wrote this book, I would probably believe you because the tonal shift between the first and the second book is quite drastic. And I think the writing feels very different for me. That is a pro because as you know, my least favorite part about the first book is the writing. However, I do recognize that does create a bit of like, a continuity issue in terms of like the tonal, like the tone drastically changes in my opinion. Um, I think book one is very like unrelenting in terms of like how depressing it is. Whereas book two already, we're seeing a little bit of like a sense of like a humor. Like it's definitely dark humor, but there's still like a sense of humor already a little bit. Um, and I do think the writing is improved. I think it's easier to follow. Maybe I'm just used to it. I'm not 100% sure actually on that, but I do feel like there is quite a tonal shift and it's funny because I actually went on Reddit to see um, what other people thought of this book and a lot of people don't like this book because of that tonal shift. They think it's really jarring to go from book one to book two but I personally again <laughs> this is a pro for me because I didn't particularly love um, the writing in book one so um, I am appreciating <laughs> the changes. The book picks up literally exactly where we leave off in the first book. Um, we actually get a repeat of one of the final scenes in book one, but from a, a slightly more like introspective lens um, of like Baru looking back on that moment. And I really liked that. I really liked revisiting that scene, um, having just seen it kind of like play out. And I do think that um, we are gonna be able to explore Baru's grief and the consequences of her actions um, coming out of the first book. But yeah, I just wanted to give you an update and kind of like my very, very first impressions of this book so far and kind of, I guess, have on record how hopeful I am for this book, despite this being very poorly rated amongst fans of the first book. But as for the rest of today, it is like really gloomy outside. Um, I might just end up playing Pokemon for a good chunk of the day. I'm probably going to read either Monster Brew or The Veiled Throne. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm kind of, I'm torn. I want to read both. Like, I just want to read everything, you know? Um, but I feel actually like, okay, I feel a little tired. Um, but I feel a lot better after this shot than even like my first and second shots which I think is uncommon, but I feel okay. I guess I will check in with you guys a little bit later once I have updates, or maybe I'll check in with you tomorrow. I haven't decided, um, but yeah, I will see you later. Hello friends, just checking in. It's been a while since my last check-in. I actually don't know when my last check-in was, probably yesterday, maybe the day before, but it is 1 a.m. on like Wednesday night, technically like Thursday morning, that weird time period anyway. Um, but I wanted to check in because I'm officially uh, on part four of The Veiled Throne, which is like literally just over halfway uh, through the book. Um, and this is actually the last part of the book. I didn't, like, it's four parts, but the fourth part is like literally half the book. Um, but I just wanted to check in. I don't have like too much in terms of plot updates. Like, I don't know how much I can say about this book because it is the third book in the series. I'm gonna put it down because it's so heavy. But I wanted to check in and put on record that like this is shaping up to be potentially my new favorite in the series. First of all, it is so much darker than the first two books. There were like two scenes in particular that just were so completely devastating. The first scene was literally like, I had to take a break after reading it because I was like, this is so horrible. Like, this is just so grim. Like, it was really tough. And I read a lot of fucking dark shit, you guys. And it, this was like really tough to read. And then there was another scene where it's just like, you know, when things go to shit and you just feel upset because you're so attached to these characters. I literally, I was like tearing up. I was like sobbing inside. like. It was just, it was a lot, it was a lot. I feel like a lot of the reason why I'm really loving this book is because in a lot of ways, it does feel like the second book in a series. If you didn't know this about me, um, I tend to really enjoy second books in series. I really like, I know everyone calls it like second book syndrome or whatever, where it's like a slower paced. It takes more time, like building the politics, building kind of the world. Um, and it 
takes more time developing characters rather than like introducing new ones. Don't get me wrong, Ken Liu is introducing a ton of new characters here, but we are also seeing character growth. And like, that's just my favorite part of like a fantasy series. So typically speaking, second books are usually my favorite. And I feel like this book has a lot of like second book qualities, because I feel like in a lot of ways in this series, the Grace of Kings serves almost as a prequel to the main story. And so in a lot of ways, The Wall of Storms actually feels like the start of this series. Um, and so therefore, even though The Veiled Throne is technically the third book in this series, it has a lot of those like second book qualities that I enjoy. We're getting so much like world building expansion of like history, like these characters are just growing and like ex developing relationships and building upon relationships. And I just like really I really love this book. I really am enjoying this. I have heard though that the second half of this book, like the tone shifts dramatically. Um, and so I'm really interested to see how that ends up playing out. So it might not end up being my favorite so far, but like so far, the first half of this book is my favorite of the two and a half books that I read so far. Like this, the first half of this book is like flawless to me. Like this book is phenomenal. But also what my favorite thing about this book is um, and I don't think it's a spoiler to say this about this book, but basically um, I read The Black Coast by Mike Brooks a few months ago. And that book, I really enjoyed certain aspects of it. Um, I really liked the idea of like a book that explored different cultures coming together and trying to like coexist together and trying to reconcile different cultural elements. Um, I really liked that aspect of that story and how it explored that. However, I felt like the execution was kind of poor in that book. I felt like things just came too easily. Like for me, like you can't have these two societies that are so diametrically opposed in so many different ways and have them just like resolve everything in like a month. Like that's just ridiculous to me. And I feel like this book does that same thing where it's trying to where you have like different groups of people with different cultural backgrounds trying to like live together on the same land and it has that kind of trope going on in here but it does it in a much more nuanced and much more in my opinion like realistic way it also takes place over a large number of years i think we're at like six years in this book already um i'm not 100 percent sure i could be wrong but we we are spanning like a large number of years here i really just think this book is so good ken Liu's writing is honestly some of the best writing i've ever read in my life this book has truly solidified this series as like one of my top like three fantasy series of all time, if not my favorite. I know I'm always just like so hesitant to recommend this series to people, A, because like I know that a lot of people don't like this series or this book, uh, or Grace of Kings rather, and I know that there are things that I like about it that I know that people will not like. And, and the other thing that keeps me from recommending it to people is because I love it so much and like because I love it so much, if I recommend it to people and they don't like it, my feelings get hurt, okay? I'm not even gonna like lie about it. My feelings get hurt because I love this series so much. <laughs> I really think if the premise sounds interesting to you, if you like epic fantasies, if you like political fantasies at all, like you will love this. Also, I think it's really interesting though, actually that this is in my library is classed as science fiction <laughs> and not fantasy because I actually do think that this book, the magic in this world, reads a lot more like science and technology. Um, and even in this world, like you don't have people who wield magic, you have engineers. And I love that. And I know that that is a thing that in reviews people say they don't like. They don't like how technical it is. They don't like how they go so in depth with like the technological advancements. But I love that. This is like, if you want a series where you're truly seeing a world and a society grow and change over many many years this is the series it is just so good it's so like philosophical it's so technological like it's just the series is perfect i really can't talk about the series in any sort of unbiased way i just think it's perfect i also think the writing is beautiful like it's it's so funny because when i was when i'm reading the physical i'm literally going through and i like reach for my like pencil case where I have my highlighter and my like tabs and stuff and then I'm like wait this is a library book I can't do that <laughs> I did look online today and it does look like the paperback is coming out in May which I'm super excited about because it's one month after my birthday which means I'll have birthday money to spend and guess what I'll be spending it on <laughs> anyway 
The plan though is because I'm halfway through, I really want to finish this be by the end of the year. Like it's already the 30th tomorrow. So like, I don't think I'll be able to finish this by the 31st because I do have plans on the 31st. I am going hiking with my family. Um, so I probably won't be able to read much. However, I do feel like I'm going to cheat a little bit. And if I finish it this weekend, at least, then I'm going to include it in my favorites video if I do feel like it tops the wall of storms. Because what I do with my favorites video is that if there are two, like if I've read multiple books in a series, I only choose my favorite of that to go in my favorites video because I just don't want like two books in the same series to take up a spot in the video. Um, but I just want to know if this is going to usurp wall of storms. I've committed so many pages to Ken Liu this year. Like it's actually wild. Anyway, um, that was a longer check-in than I had intended. I just, I just love this series so much. I probably, in terms of this book though, I don't know if I'll check in until the end. Cause like I said, it's just so hard for me to have like actual things to talk about in this book because it is the third book in a series. Um, but I will check in if there's anything like major, but otherwise I will just check in with you when I finish the book or if I like pick anything else up. Um, but yeah, that is it for now. And I guess I will see you guys at the next one. Hello friends! Happy New Year's Eve! Happy Friday! Guess I'm doing a quick check-in. Um, I don't have too much to update on The Veiled Throne. I read uh, quite a bit yesterday actually. I think I read about 200-ish pages. I have about 200 pages left so I'm definitely on track to finish the book today. Gotta please. I honestly can't even remember what I've already talked about um already about this book or not but one thing that I really like in this book is that there is a heavy emphasis on like the development of culture uh, and one of the main things in this book in particular is food and food culture and like how food is just like a huge part of culture and like from my point of view as someone who is Chinese American like food is a huge part of our culture um and I just really enjoy reading about that um there's also like a whole like culinary segment in the second half of the book which I am personally really enjoying. I can definitely see that not being everyone's cup of tea but as someone who like loves watching like cooking competition shows, cooking videos, um, I've also like worked in the food industry before. I'm just really enjoying this part of the book. I also feel like it provides the book with some much needed like comedic relief because like the first half of this book is really like dark um, especially towards the end of part three like to around the middle section like that shit gets so dark. <laughs> so I really personally appreciated a bit of relief there. Um, because I feel, felt like with Wall of Storms, that was one of my main things as to like why it took me so long to read Wall of Storms. It's just because I needed breaks um, from the book because it was so fucking stressful, honestly. So I'm really glad that like The Veiled Throne is actually like giving us those breaks within the text, but like in a way that I still get to like explore more of the world, kind of more mundane parts of life in this place in this world and I really really enjoy that. Like unless the last 200 pages are shit it's gonna be a five star read for me. <laughs> like again like Ken Liu is honestly at this point he is my favorite author like I he can do no wrong in my eyes like his writing is fantastic. Oh I also just got approved on that galley for Tiger's Honor. Tiger Honor? Tiger's Honor? I don't know by Yoon Ha Lee which is the sequel or I think it's a companion novel. I don't think it's like a direct sequel to Dragon Pearl, which is a middle grade sci-fi, which I really loved. I read in January um, of this year and I really, really loved it. And I'm kind of in a middle grade mood. So it's like once I finish The Veiled Throne, I'm going to move on to that because that does come out on Tuesday. So I do need to read it this weekend or I would like to read it this weekend. But regardless, I'm definitely in the mood for it. So I'm really excited to read that. Yay. But anyway, that is it for this check in. I will let you know when I finish The Veiled Throne and my final rating, it will probably be a five stars, but I will definitely confirm it here. Hello, friends. It is easy. 10? 10? 10.56 not even 11 o'clock. A full hour to spare and a bit and I have just finished The Veiled Throne by Ken Liu. Woo! What a great book. Five out of five stars. Like the second half of this book was so good. I loved every second of this book. This is so, this is definitely for me anyway, this is definitely my favorite in the series so far. There were just a lot of elements that I really liked. There is a romance in the second half of this book that I 
love. There's kind of been like two, I would say like two main romances so far. There was one in The Wall of Storms and then there was one in here and I've loved them both. The romance in here is so like minor, but like it just makes you feel things. I really like it. Um, I can see some people not liking this book or not liking how it ends because I think when you read it, it is really obvious that it was not meant to be the ending. Like this is not the ending of a book. This is very much a book that was split in two. And I think that is very apparent when you read it. However, that's not something that bothers me personally, especially because I went into this knowing that it was going to be like that. It does end at a point where I feel like it's consistent with the other two books. It just doesn't have that like explosive ending that the other two books have had. Um, the other two books have had like kind of like a final battle kind of situation. Whereas this book doesn't. It just ends on a scene um, with the gods, which is kind of how the last two books have ended. It always ends with like the gods having a little like chat. Um, and I do think this book ends in a really interesting way with the gods. That has always been one of the most interesting parts about this series is like how the gods kind of just watch from afar, but also like have a finger on everything. Um, and I'm interested to see how that will change. This book also has some really interesting commentary and, and not commentary, but like touches on themes of like religion and how faith and belief systems, how that powers a society in a way. Um, and you see that through the gods and their relationship with the mortals. It's very interesting. Honestly, there's just so many fucking themes in this book that I can't even like list them all because there's just so much going on. There's so much. I just really think everyone should give this book a try. I also think that the female characters in this book are phenomenal. Like in this series in general, I think the female characters are phenomenal. It like makes me like low key kind of angry whenever I see reviews of book one being like, it's has no female characters. And I'm like, oh, it just makes me angry. Even in book one, like I would say, I will say there are less female characters. And I would say our main characters in book one are male characters. I strongly believe that no representation is better than bad representation. However, Ken Liu has never given, given us bad female characters. So I don't have a problem with there only being a small handful of female characters in book one. Because for me, even in book one, the few female characters we do get are extremely well developed, are really interesting characters. And so like, I've never had a problem with the female characters in this series. Um, I also think that even in book one, even with the world being like quite misogynistic, that never goes unchallenged. So I've said it before, but like, I do think that that specific criticism of book one, I, I just personally can't understand. I don't understand where it comes from, especially if you take the series as a whole, these are some of the best written like women in in fiction. The female characters in the, the series are so nuanced, so diverse in thought, in ideology. Same with everyone else, but like in particular the women. I feel like in fantasy especially you can sometimes fall into this trap of like there only being a few different types of, of female characters available to you. You know, you have like the mother character, you have like a warrior character, you know, like there are archetypes that that are used quite frequently. And I feel like in this series, we get such a range of different female characters. Also, we get female villains, which is just chef's kiss amazing. Gia is my favorite. She's so fucking unhinged, so fucking unhinged. I cannot wait to see how in book four, she becomes more and more and more unhinged. Like this woman, if you like MILFs, if you like evil, villainous, murderous MILFs, you have to read this series because she is like top tier. What I really like seeing is this progression. Like in general, I've really liked seeing this world and how the society has progressed. But one thing I really love and how in book one, one of my favorite things about the female characters is that you can clearly tell that the world is very misogynistic, and very sexist, but you see these female characters kind of like working within the constraints given to them by society and trying to push the boundaries of that and like trying to like influence politics and change the way that they can within the confines that have been given to them. Um, and then I love that throughout the years that we spend in this world, we've now seen society change and we've now seen women in this society, you know, change along with it and like increasingly get more and more powerful because of the things they're able to do now. And it's just so, it's so satisfying to see it. And I just love it. I love this book. I love this series. I literally cannot tell you 
enough that you need to go read the series. Like, I just think it's so fucking good. I'm so excited for book four. I'm really excited to see how the story ends. I think there's so many plot threads that have been opened in this book that I feel like I can't wait to see how Ken Liu wraps them all up. I feel like I, 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 I don't think he will let me down. I feel like at this point, like, I think he will do a good job at it. I'm really excited to see it. Um, I can see some people like not liking the ending because it's not like a traditional kind of like fantasy ending or whatever. Um, but for me, that doesn't bother me personally, because I feel like in a lot of different types of media, you get that anyway. Like I read a lot of manga and like, even if we're talking like slightly more serialized novels, I feel like it's quite common to just have like an abrupt break. Um, I think about like the Chinese, like translated books that I read, like um, A Hero Born was like that, where it just ended. Um, and it's it, it doesn't really bother me that much personally. I think if you're really used to kind of like more very traditional, like Western storytelling styles, you might find the ending a bit jarring just because it's not, there's no like climax really. Um, so it's very different um, than your traditional standard kind of like novel because it is only technically half of a book so just keep that in mind if that bothers you then i'd say maybe wait for the last book to come out and then read them all in a go but i do feel like this book works on its own like i don't i don't have a problem with this book on its own i think it's fantastic what i kind of love actually is that grace of kings was also my last read of 2020 um and i had finished it like on new year's eve i actually like finished it technically after midnight so I've technically finished it on january the first but whatever but i just like it it's just like it just feels right it feels right for this to be like my last book of the year and i'm just like i love it i love it so much anyway i've been blabbing on like forever um i will shut up now because i also this vlog is like probably way too long because i vlogged for way too many days um so i'm just gonna end it here happy new year's eve happy new year everyone um by the time this goes up it will already be the new year but um i hope you have enjoyed this video this vlog if you've made it to the end thank you so much i really appreciate you guys um and i just wanted to take this time also to thank you guys for all your support this year um i know i've been like less consistent this year with like uploads and stuff and i kind of like stopped uploading twice a week as well so i know i haven't been like around as much but i do really really appreciate all the like support that you guys have given me so just want to say thank you guys for 2021 and looking forward to producing more content for you guys in 2022 um and yeah that is it for this video that is it for this vlog if you like this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you can't think of anything leave me a firework emoji um and if you liked what you saw and you want to see more from me please don't forget to hit the subscribe button that is it for today thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time